So if you remember last week, what we looked at was we looked at how we could use the Hunter Nash method to design a multiple stage liquid liquid extraction system. But that was a multi stage liquid liquid extraction system that only had a single section. Okay? And that meant that we were free to pick the composition of the raffinate that we wanted, but then our extract composition was determined by a straight mass balance with our raffinate composition. So that wasn't a free choice for us. So if we want to design a system more like a distillation column where we can specify the composition of both the top and the bottom product. So in this case, if we wanted to specify both the raffinate and the extract composition, okay, we need to look into designing a two-section liquid-liquid extraction system. So in today's session, that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at how we can extend the Hunt and Ash method into actually designing a two-section liquid-liquid extraction system. So here we have essentially a design of a typical two-section system. <clears throat> so you'll notice we've got our a raffinate and a solvent. We've got our feed, but our feed is now coming into the middle of the stages in our column rather than at one end of our column. Then we have an extract product, but what we do is we then do some solvent recovery. Okay, so this is another separation step where we separate our solvent from our extract. Okay? Then we can take our extract off as a product, but because we need flow in both directions, we recycle or reflux, like in a distillation column, some of our separated extract back into our column. Okay? And what that does. I mentioned this to, to give us that free choice of both the raffinate and the extract composition so we can specify both. So if we were going to draw that system on our ternary diagram, you can still see that we have our solvent and our feed because they're our two inputs into the whole system still dictated by our line with a total mix point. So that's exactly the same as all the liquid-liquid extraction systems we've looked at. But you can see we get to specify our raffinate and we can specify an extract. So you can see that we no longer have that simple straight line case like we did for the single section system where our extract and our raffinate lie on the straight line that passes through our mixing point. Okay? So does that make sense so far? <coughs> yep. So what we need to do now is look at a set of mass balances on our system. And that set of mass balances is going to allow us to do what we did just with the Hunter Nash method, which is to define the positions of the operating points. So, as you might expect, because we've got two sections, <coughs> we're going to have two operating points. Okay? So just like in distillation, where you have 
two sections of your distillation column, one above the feed and one below the feed, and you have two operating lines, we're going to have two operating points, one for the top of the column above the feed and one for the bottom of the column <coughs> below the feed. <coughs> So the first thing we want to do is think about <coughs> taking a mass balance around the bottom of our column. So if we define this area, what we can do is that we can simply say that the, um, the materials going in to this section is our extract from stage K plus our final raffinate, our M plus 1, and that must be equal to what comes out of that mass balance section. Okay, So that's our R K plus 1 and our extract at our final stage. Okay, So all we've done there it's just in a mass balance. We can also, as you've seen in the diagram, we've defined this R n plus 1 to be our F1, i.e. just a feed into the column. And that's just for ease of naming. <coughs> OK? Now, if you remember what we did, for our single section system for the Hunter Nash, we looked at the difference in the flow pairs, didn't we? So we looked at the difference between the flows here and the difference between the flows here. And we defined that as our operating point, okay? Because we proved that they were the same for every stage. So we can do exactly the same here. So we can say that the difference at the bottom must be equal to that at the top. And we can define that as an operating point. Okay, so because we're going to have two operating points, we can just define this as delta 1. And that gives us that. That's the operating point for the bottom of our column. Okay? So what we also need to do to actually allow us to plot this on our diagram is to look at a couple of other mass balances. So the new part of our column that we've added is essentially this bottom bit where we're recovering the solvent and we're refluxing some of our product back into our liquid-liquid extraction column. So what we can do here again is do another mass balance around our column. So if you see, we've got going in just our final <coughs> extract, and then we've got F1, D, and our recovered solvent coming out of that section. So if we rearrange this, we can get essentially our total amount coming out fully of our column is actually given by our flow pair that we've already seen is our operating point 1. So we can define that also as delta 1. OK? Now we can also, we want to think about a mass balance for the whole column. Because if we're trying to draw on our ternary diagram, the points that we know are essentially our inputs into the column, and that includes our original solvent. So if we think 
about a mass balance around the ooh, around the whole of our column. Okay. So again, we can have what goes in. So that's our solvent plus our F2. So that's our original feed. That's what we're trying to separate. <coughs> has to equal what comes out. So we know what comes out is R1. It's our D and our SD. Okay? Now, the total amount that goes in, our solvent plus our original feed, we can define that exactly the same way as we defined it for our single section system. So we can still define our total mixed composition. So we can still say that the total amount added to our system is M. Okay? So that means that if we substitute the M in, we can have M minus R equals our D plus SD. Okay? And we've already seen that our D plus SD is equal to our delta 1, our first operating point. Okay? So what we've done is we've defined a set of equations related to our operating point. So we know that En and F1 and delta 1 all lie on a straight line. Ek and Rk plus 1 all lie on a straight line. And M and R and delta 1 all lie in a straight line. So this is exactly the same process as we did with the Hunter-Nash. We're finding the pairs that are all collinear so we can draw them as straight lines onto our system. So if we're going to look at that, so what we've just found is that R, R1, M, and delta 1 all lie on a straight line. So if we're going to do that, what we can do is we can look at lying, uh, drawing a straight line and we know that delta 1 must lie somewhere on that straight line, okay? The next thing we said was that our final solvent that we've recovered, our, ex our final extract and our F1 are all lie in a straight line, okay? So we know our final extract because we've been able to specify that. And we have our final solvent recovered. So if you look at the diagram, that's actually the solvent coming out of our solvent recovery. Now that is a separate separation. Okay? And what we can do is we can actually define how good that separation is. <coughs> okay? So if we go for a simplification and say that that separation is actually ideal, okay, that means that our recovered solvent is just pure solvent. Okay? So we know our pure solvent point and we know our extract. 
So what we can do is we can draw a straight line between these points. Okay, and that allows us to find our F1. So because we've said that our solvent recovery is ideal, then what is coming out here contains no solvent. Okay? And we know so the point that contains no solvent on our diagram is this axis here. Okay? So that allows us to define our F1 point. Okay, so that's our separated <laughs> reflux going back into the column. The final set that we determined was that our final extract, our F1, and our delta 1 are all collinear as well. So we've already got a straight line that passes between that. Right, so F1, EN, and delta 1. So, from those two expressions, we know the point where the line through R1 and M, and the line through F1 and EN, where they meet, that gives us our first operating point, okay? And that's the operating point for the bottom of the column. <coughs> so what we need to do now is go back to our mass balance system and start thinking about how can we find the operating point for the top of the column. Okay? So if we want to look for the operating point at the top of the column, the sensible first step is to actually do a mass balance around the top of the column. Okay? So just like we did around the bottom of the column, so we can say that our, if we look at our flows in, essentially have S going in, and we have R, J plus 1. Okay? And then that has to equal what comes out. So that's our R1 and our EJ. So again, just like we did for the bottom of the column, if we look at the difference in the flow pairs, so R1 minus S, so that's the, the difference in the flow pairs at the top, must equal Rj plus 1 minus Ej, so that's the difference at the bottom. And now what we can do is just to find that as our second operating point. So that's the operating point for the top of the column. Okay? Now if we go to a mass balance around our total column, excluding our solvent recovery part, we can again go with our total in, so that's S plus our F2 going in, plus our F1 going in, <coughs> and that has to equal what comes out, so that's our R1 plus our EN. Okay. Now what we can do is rearrange this, and if we rearrange it, we get 
that F2 minus EN minus F1 equals R1 minus S. Okay? Now, we've just seen here that R1 minus S equals delta 2. Okay? And from the mass balance where we were looking at deriving the operating point for the bottom of the column, we actually got an expression that was EN minus F1 equals delta 1. EN minus F1 equals delta 1. Okay? So what we can do is substitute those in And what we've got there is that our, our feed, our total feed, and our operating point one are collinear with our second <coughs> operating point. <coughs> so if we go back to our ternary diagram, looking about how we can put our second operating point. What we've just seen is that R1, S, and delta 2 are collinear, okay? So R1 and S So delta 2 must lie somewhere on this line. Okay? The other set we've just seen is that F2, delta 1, and delta 2 are also collinear. Okay? So F so if we find F2 and delta 1. Then we can extend that and where that meets, that is the operating point for the top of our column. Okay? So there's one more there's one more point that we might want to think about plotting on our diagram that we can get off our diagram okay and that is the total feed added to our column okay so the total feed added to our column is our F2 plus our F1 okay so if we think back again to this red boundary that we've drawn, where we get this mass balance, what we can actually do is rearrange this differently. Okay? So instead of going for the rearrangement here, we can rearrange it differently. And what we can actually get is F1 plus F2 minus En equals R1 minus S. Okay? Now our R1 minus S is delta 2. Okay? And we just, I've just talked about defining this total feed, which is the sum of the two feeds <coughs> into the system. So F1 plus <coughs> F2 equals a total feed. Okay? So what we can write is that our total feed minus the n equals delta 2. And that means that our total feed, <coughs> our extract, and our second operating point are also lie on a straight line. So, that's our 
total feed our En and our delta 2 all lie on a straight line. Okay. And we know because our total feed is actually made up of our F1 plus F2, then we know that F1, F2, and F total also lie on a straight line. So that allows us to define our total feed point. So now what we do to find our number of stages is exactly the same method that we use for the single section in the Hunter Nash. We start from our feed and then we start stepping using the equilibrium lines and then our operating points. And then when we pass our F2, we then move on to our other operating point. Okay? So we start drawing the stages using our delta 1 between En and then as we get to F2 we switch and start using our delta 2 operating point until we get to our raffinate that we actually want. Okay? So I know that was complicated, right? There was a lot of mass balances, uh, but it all comes down to essentially remembering this set of collinear systems, okay? So there's an example for you to try in the questions in the tutorials, and you'll notice that it's called question D1, okay? And you'll be pleased to hear that that means that something like this is too complicated to be in the exam. Okay? <laughs> so it's very important, it's important that you know this because when you're designing the liquid-liquid extraction systems, this will be the type that you're designing. You'll be designing the two-section system because that allows you to specify your raffinate and your extract. So when it comes to like design project, this is the type of thing you'll be designing if you need to do liquid-liquid extraction. Okay? However, for the exam, as complicated as it will get, will be the single-section system like the Hunter Nash that you did last week. Okay, so is there any questions before you start the tutorial? <coughs> yeah? Oh yeah, so just a quick, so a repeat there just on the, the method to get the number of stages. So you can, you start from your extract. Okay, so like if you think distillation, you can start from your top product. Then you do exactly the same method as you used for the Hunter Nash, the single section, where you go along the equilibrium lines first, and then you go to the operating point. So the operating point for this part of the column is our delta one. Then when your composition gets past the feed point, the F2, just like in distillation, you swap to your other operating point and then you move between your equilibrium lines and your delta 2 operating point until you get to your specified raffinate composition. Okay? Okay. <coughs>